interesting stuff. Went in and got the transmission and the engine separated. Pulled valve covers. Checked out my heads. I don't know if you can see that too good. But that's those, those old 492. Some people call them the baby camel or double hump heads. They're like the LT1 style head they used in 1971. But I just happened to have them off of an old project. So went through and did some port work on them and now that I'm looking at this uh, oh, probably two and four I am seeing some oily residue inside the exhaust port now that I got it up in the light so that means that thing's been pushing a little bit of oil I've never really noticed it smoke but apparently it must have been doing something so worst case scenario I may have to pull the heads off I was just going to give you a shot of some of these witness marks if you can see them. Because you can see where some of the valve tips are showing a good, you know, not quite centered. Probably could use a slightly shorter push rod, but I'm going to run a witness mark with the 1.6 rocker arms to see where they're at. But you can see where some of these valves are rotating. Kind of hard to see with the glare. Because you see a good straight witness mark on some of them. Then you see where the valve's rotating on other ones. I don't know if that's really good or bad, because I'm not an expert, but hopefully it's not too bad. Here's the old B&M 2400 converter, which I suspect is the problem with the bent flex plate, because uh, it never really wanted to engage the rear of the crank the way it should, so I had to use 1 8 about 1 8 inch thick washers to space that distance between the converter and the flex plate. Apparently it did not like that at all because it ended up bending that flex plate pretty bad because it started out as just a kind of a mild vibration at a lower RPM and it got bad enough that when you climbed underneath there to look at it while it was running it was immediately apparent that that motor had to come back out or at least the flex plate had to be changed because it was wobbling like crazy. I was afraid that there was some damage to maybe the thrust bearing, but the crank is setting good for forward and back. It's still tight. My uh, dampener in the front doesn't wobble, move, you know, do anything bad while the motor's running. So I feel that the thrust is still good in it. Uh, you can see again on this head where some of the valves or some of the rocker arms were just making a nice straight line on the valve tip but then other ones kind of hard to get you can see where they're just kind of dancing around from the valve spinning and I don't know if maybe that's just not quite enough uh, valve adjustment on these hydraulic lifters keeping enough pressure on them I'm not sure because they were only set maybe a quarter. Now I think I went an eighth of an inch past zero lash. I think I'm going to go a full half turn into the lifter plunger on the adjustment on the 1.6 rockers. Because I don't, I don't know if that's really good for those to be dancing around like a solid lift cam. But anyway, made a huge mess. Because no matter how careful you are trying to empty all the coolant out of the block when you start jostling it around you end up with a little bitty lake there's my turbo 350 basically with this transgo shift kit it's supposed to have been fully rebuilt I took the master kit with all the components to a, a rebuilder shop which I'll never do again I don't care if I gotta take a, sh a class at the local community college I'm building my own transmissions from now on because you just can't trust half the people that are out there doing it. So I hope I got what I paid for on that tranny. I'm um, going to continue tearing into this, get that torque converter and flex plate off there and see what we're doing. See if there isn't a problem with that uh, rear of the crank where the uh, center hub on the converter engages the crank. Maybe there's something built up in there. I don't know. Um, I, w I wished I had taken a video. <clears throat> I pulled off these kind of hard to see in this bag 
But I pulled the uh, comp cams, magnum roller tip, 152 rockers, uh, with the Pioneer poly locks off. And I've got my comp cams. 1.6 full aluminum roller rocker soaking in oil. I didn't quite have enough oil to submerge them all at one time, so I just put them in a bag and just rotate the bag every so often. Found them on uh, eBay. Another eBay find. Same as that. But I uh, got a heck of a deal on those rocker arms. I couldn't have beat that with a stick. Uh, they came in. They were as advertised in excellent shape. No damage. Took them up to uh, certified cars, washed them in the solvent tank, and cleaned them out real good, and started soaking them in oil, getting ready to put on. Anyway, we got a bunch of junk in here. I can get rid of the. I got a full set of those old Eagle Alloy rims, tens and eights. Got them for sale on Craigslist. There's a bullet intake. I'm getting ready to do a port job on it. That's one of those three piece. Uh, 4.6 Ford bullet intakes. I'm going to clean that up for a guy. Do some port matching and clean up those runners a little bit. I know some of you will notice those turbo headers down there. That goes to a different project that I may never finish. I may not get old. I may not live long enough to finish that project. But uh, I've got a 700R4 I'm going to go through. I got it a deal another deal I found locally uh, comes with a 3200 lockup converter eventually that's going to make its way into the blazer because revving 3000 rpms on the highway isn't all that cool and there's the big block 468 that belongs to those turbo headers you saw over there that's about eight I think it's going to turn out to be like eight and a half to one static compression solid roller yeah either single or twin turbo i haven't decided on that yet it's an 850 blow through carb probably gonna make around a thousand horsepower i don't want to get too carried away anyway i just thought i'd give you a little update on where we were at on this project i'm a cooling fans if it just in case anybody wants to know you get the uh, dodge intrepid dual fan setup and just with a little bit of trimming to fit your radiator, it's just like it was made like it was made for it. And those in Dodge Intrepid fans pull a ton of air and will cool a V8 S10 with no problem. So anyway, we'll get to work, get a little bit more stuff done, and we'll go from there.